Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, we got no problem. Today we're going to talk about something that maybe can be a little esoteric in our discussion of electricity and electrons and all that stuff. And it's this one. Electric field. You may have heard of force fields, like in Star Wars or Star Trek or some, some sci-fi movie. But there really are fields, uh, electric fields. There's also gravitational fields. Uh, forces can create fields. And when we talk about an electric field, it's as if the, it's exerting influence beyond itself. Well, classic way to look at that is if I've got some charge, positive Q. I put a capital. I don't know why I put my capital. And it's going to exert a field away from it. Remember, I think we've said this, but well, maybe we haven't. But um, I'll say this now, that when you have a positive charge, you always have the force lines go away from a positive. And by the way, for a negative charge, let's do negative Q, right? See, that's the negative Q. All the charge lines go towards it. So this is a field that it's going to exert. Now, they can have influences, the fields, on each other, which we'll get to a bit later. So a couple of points when we talk about how to like draw electric fields. There are, I believe, five rules that you want to apply. So let's just jot these rules down because I think it's important. Number one is electric field lines always point in the direction of the electric field vector at every point. All right. They always start at the positive charge, and they either end at the negative or they go off to infinity. So this one's going off to infinity. Okay. Number three, electric field lines end at negative charges, right? Um, or they can sometimes even end at infinity. Number four, electric field lines are closer together when the electric field has a greater magnitude. I'm going to talk about the electric field and how strong it is in a little bit later. So they're closer together if, if, if you will, the, the electric field is stronger. There's like strong fields and weak fields. And then the number of electric field lines entering or leaving is proportional to the strength of the magnitude of the electric field. So make sure you jot those downs, those do, downs, <laughs> jot those down so that you can do problems when we work this out. So when we talk about the strength of the electric field, how strong is the electric field, what units are, you probably aren't surprised that this gets degraded into a mathematical equation. And it's an equation similar to what we've been seeing. Now this is now E, the strength of the electric field, not energy, don't get this confused. It's equal to our fun constant K times Q over R squared. So just one Q, the charge of that electric field distance. So it's similar to the, the electric uh, force, but it's, sim it's not the same because we only got one Q. It's not KQQ, it's just KQ over R squared. So let's do this example right here. We've got the magnitude of an electric field produced by a one UC. Now we need to talk about that. One UC, that's a micro coulomb point charge at a distance D is 0 0.75 meters. Now a micro means a millionth of it. So there's one million micro coulombs in one coulomb. So it's 10 to the minus sixth. So we're gonna just use our cool equation, E equals KQ over R squared. K again, we know this number. This is the big number, 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Again, I'm gonna not put the units, probably cheating on that. Uh, times the Q. Now the Q is gonna be 1.0 times 10 to the minus sixth Coulombs. I have to put it into coulombs. A microcoulomb is a millionth of a coulomb divided by the meters squared, 0.75 squared meters. And that's got all kinds of units. That's going to give us the unit. By the way, uh, the unit, if you think about it, is it's going to be, well, it's a newton per coulomb. I'm not going to go into the details why it's a newton per coulomb. So when you take this times this divided by this, you get 1.6 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb. It's like force per unit charge. It's like the density. Like, think about that. Newtons per coulomb. It's how dense that field is. So that's how you find the magnitude of the electric field. Now probably the most interesting thing about electric fields is that when we put two charges together, they can make what we call electric field lines. And they have different patterns depending on if they're positive, 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 negative, or even have to have different magnitudes. So classically, we can look right here at one that's positive, positive. And as you notice, what's happening is the charges don't ever meet. Field lines, by the way, they never meet. 
um, well, at least when they're positive, positive, is that they are, are curving away. Do you see how that's working? Because it's in a repulsive, positive, positive is repulsive. And these are what the field lines look like. Now, if we could go in class, I would show you how these field lines look. We could actually do this with mag magnets, and magnets would work the same way. And you could do like some iron shavings on top of like a piece of paper. And you could actually see what this looks like. But uh, if you're watching this, you're probably watching this because we're doing this during the whole COVID crisis, and we're doing this from home. So you're going to have to just envision what this looks like. So that's positive, positive. What about when you have positive, negative? So when you have positive, negative, what you can see is now the field lines are joining. Notice that with the arrow direction, it goes from positive to negative, but they can actually join in certain parts because now we have attractive forces. By the way, you should be sketching both of these pictures in your notes. And then lastly, I think the more intriguing one is they get more complex. Like, look, we got one where we got a two positive charge and then one negative charge. Because you got a stronger force, or electric field, not force. Um, it is force, Newton per coulomb, but you got a stronger electric field, you can see how that can skew it. And, and you can probably envision, if we had 10 of these, it would be crazy. Um, we may have an opportunity to do like an online simulation where we play around with this, but um, electric fields, electric fields are a real thing, and it creates fields, and we can do things with electric fields. It ultimately creates, and I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit, it creates something we call induction, and induction is super cool, and that's really kind of how we make electricity to, to power our cool stuff that we use every day. Houston, we got a problem. No problem. Like, no problem, because yeah, yeah, you're awesome. Hey, we're going to see you guys in class.